Io voglio parlare da... Voglio... I want to start from a figure that connects the previous debate with the current one. And this number is 300 million. 300 million is the amount of money that uh, three weeks ago uh, the European Commission uh, has allocated to face the emergency of refugees on the Balkanic route. This was also the cost that the Italian state has paid not to organize a one single election day between the next referendum and the next administrative elections. And the Italian government has decided to do so in order uh, to obstacle uh, the referendum that will be held on April the 17th. So we want to start from this point with Marika, Marika that with many others has been working hard uh, to um, for the referendum to be organized and I would like uh, you to tell us why it is important that we go and cast a vote on April the 17th. Yes, well. Going back to figures, let me tell you what the three, let me give you another number, 340 million, um, which is the amount of the royalties that we, um, that every year are paid by our companies in Italy. So it is clear that we are not uh, talking of particularly high royalties. They are a very limited uh, source of revenue for Italy. But going back to the referendum, why is it important that we go and cast a vote on April the 17th? Well, number one, because we must protect the idea uh, that we can express our ideas and that the government cannot sabotage this act. And so we must really work for a massive, huge participation at the referendum. We are uh, facing huge difficulties because uh, the media is refusing to provide adequate coverage to the issue. But there are millions of citizens that are taking action, regardless of the silence of the media, to achieve our result. By participating to the referendum and casting our vote, we can contribute to an important result that can help us in uh, stop being dependent on fossil fuel. The era of fossil fuels is over. Uh, scientists know this. Uh, activists from all over the world uh, are aware of this. And so it is important, uh, the referendum, because we can help in building a future, a vision for the future. Italy participated in past December uh, to um, the uh, talks on, on the climate in Paris and she signed an agreement in which she took uh, in which Italy took precise commitments but the investments that our country is doing go in the opposite direction so it is important for people to understand that to stopping drilling at sea goes in the direction of the commitments that Italy undertook in Paris and so April the 17th is an important occasion to achieve this result They often tell us that if you stop offshore drilling or if you stop um, digging the soil, we will lose jobs. Valentina, you're a trade unionist. What do you think of that? Well. FIOM is also the trade union that organizes the workers that produce the pipes that are also used for oil drilling. But we do not accept the um, those who try to put jobs and environment in contrast with one another. We need to get rid of this framework and to get rid of those of that rhetoric that is trying to uh, play on this contradiction also uh, among workers. Um, 
of course, the, uh, it's, uh, the referendum will not have an immediate impact on jobs because at the center of the referendum is the duration of concessions for drilling, uh, of authorizations for drilling. But anyway, there is a more general point, which is that uh, the model that oil drilling is applying, applying is a failing model. Otherwise, um, we should not continue to simply uh, defend a model just because this way we will protect jobs by defending a model that is a 19th century one, and this will not work. We have, of course, to bear in mind the complexities of uh, the world of labor, but we should not simply defend the status quo but rather have a more general vision in mind. This is why Fium is contributed to the campaign on the no drilling referendum, but is also contributing to the campaign on uh, the constitutional referendum, because you cannot split uh, the discourse on democracy and on a social crisis and on the environment. We must think in overall terms and try and develop pr proposals that can keep these different aspects together. Okay, tell me more about this. Uh, one of the issues that also Yanis explored in his opening remarks is that of ecological transition. As a trade union and one that is a metal working trade union represents somehow a 20th century model, uh, what is your position on the great issue of the green economic transition? Well, one of our proposals um, in the platform that we just presented, one of our proposals says that we should create a permanent table on environmental sustainability. Uh, this is because we believe German, in Germany a permanent table on this topic has been created more than three years ago. The problem in general is how we can um, think of a productive reconversion also in terms of the impact of production that can create jobs. Yanis Varoufakis in his introduction spoke of maintaining uh, strategic sovereignty of the people with respect to Google. We all use uh, smartphones, uh, but smartphones did not uh, appear out of nowhere. Mm, the Silicon Valley is the result of a process of investment. So, together with the digital revolution, we should really think of a in terms of a circular economy that is supported also through investments in order to create sustainability plans that can work in terms of prevention and not simply in terms of controlling the damaging effects. Of course, this is also connected to the issue of no knowledge, education, and so far and so forth. Yes, and one of the most important proposals of DiEM25 has to do with what you just said and make sure that the ECB stops printing 80 million euros a month just to give them to the banks, but rather to invest this money directly in buying uh, bonds from the European Bank of Investment so that we can build a great investment plan at the European level for a green transformation of our productive sphere. There are those who say that you need oil drilling in order to create jobs, but that's not the case. You need drilling or you won't have uh, uh, any energy. Is that true? No, that's not true. What we need 
What is urgent is to uh, engage in a radical rethinking of the economic system. We often speak of change, but in fact, no change occurs. Just slight, slight corrections are introduced. We must understand that the difference between the green economy and a deep radical reconversion of what we produce, as Valentina just said, we must think in terms of how we produce, what we produce, um, for which reason we produce. And we need public investments that and we need structural funds and European funds to be redirected towards uh, green technologies. Uh, we are still investing a huge amount of money every year in fossil, fossil fuels. And all that money could be uh, reinvested for different purposes. The issue of the energy is a central one, which is at the heart of our economy. And giving up fossil fuels is something that we just have to do and as fast as we can. Scientists have told us that our biosphere can only absorb emissions deriving from one-fifth of uh, the current drilling sites. This means that all the other ones must be shut down. We do have alternatives in terms of renewable energies and in terms of an energetic democracy. Uh, let me quote a study by the Stanford and Berkeley University that was recently published. They verified that with the existing technologies in the United States, you could create a scenario where by 2050 you can uh, fuel, produce all the energy the United States needs only through renewable energies. So it means that the objective can be achieved, but there is a lack of a political will, and that is why, uh, as a society, we must push in this direction. Thank you, Marika. Consigli per gli acquisti. Per gli acquisti di Yanis. Che cosa gli consigliamo? What can we suggest to uh, Yanis? What should we do? Uh, tell me one minute as uh, the 25 on the environment and the ecological transition. Well, I believe that another point that is strictly connected to that of the environment is that of democratization. And democratization is an issue that does not interest only European in institutions, but also decision-making processes at the local level where local communities are the victims of, um, of very negative environmental effects and effects for the, he for the health, and they do not have a voice. So bringing democracy back into our societies is essential. And if we wish to democratize Europe, we must also think how we can rebuild democracy at the community level. This is essential. Uh, you know, and we need also to use the existing tools in this direction, including uh, the tool of the referendum on April the 17th. Io continuo su quanto stava dicendo su quanto stava dicendo Mario. Let me just continue in the same on the point of the referendum. The fact that we need again democratic control over our local communities is an essential point and it is not a case that um the government is trying to sabotage on this. We are speaking of a government that was not elected and is telling Italian citizens that they should not cast a vote. So basically what they're saying is that popular sovereignty is dangerous on these issues. So I believe that the issue of democracy is essential also from an environmental perspective. 
and also that the other thing that we need at the European level is a single industrial policy, a single energy policy at the European level. You said, uh, Lorenzo, you just said, I am 31 years old. I do not wish to be uh, a witness to the failure of Europe. I personally uh, belong to that generation that was educated in the name of the environment and uh, and now what we see is instead a situation uh, where we are making horrible agreements uh, uh, to sacrifice migrants in the name of, of agreements with countries that, for our interests. And really, we should uh, go back to two essential values for our people being pro-European and in favor of the environment. Thank you for moving to the 21st century. 